LSU losing to Dayton by three. A game the Tigers led by 15 with nine points remaining. LSU controls the tip and we are underway. Day two at the Charleston Classic. Should be a fun one. Some really good matchups. The only game that kind of got out of hand yesterday was Houston as they get Will Baker involved early on and that's a good sign. Without question, Baker has really improved his low post scoring. He started off being a pick and pop guy. Now he can post you up. Talked about Aaron Scott, but Reuben Jones, CJ Nolan, a couple guys. Jones had some big buckets. Nolan was kind of quiet yesterday. Well, Jones is a really important guy from North Texas. I think he settles everybody down and makes everybody a lot more comfortable in their roles. Two to shoot. Nolan in trouble. Leans in, throws it up, air ball, great defensive possession from LSU. And that's definitely a question for both of these teams. Who brings more energy in this early game? I tell you what, yesterday was a day where the energy was off the chart in both games early. And it's starting off this way again for LSU. They understand how important this time of the year is and getting off to a good start. I'm sure you can feel for Matt McMahon a little bit as a head coach who lost on Basically a buzzer beater last Friday to Nichols and then last night blowing a 15-point lead with nine minutes to go. Yeah, but the one thing that this thing teaches you, you got to pick yourself up and dust yourself off and come right back. See how his team responds. Baker on a pump fake. Will Baker with the left hand off the dribble this time. If they can get Baker to do that because everybody's closing out and trying to take away his face-up jump shot because that's what he's known for. Baker had 10 points yesterday. Eight of them came in the first three minutes and 43 seconds of the second half, but he didn't score after the 16-17 mark in that half. Well, they Dayton did a good job of getting after him a little bit and make him put the ball on the floor. And that young man had just knocked that basket down. Nolan, I think he's really important in North Texas. Baker again. Can't hit this one. Definitely a good sign, though, for UNT that C.J. Nolan knocked down the open three. Now Jones stepping back on Reed. That's a clean-looking three. The North Texas guards can play with any set of guards in any conference. They're very good handling the basketball. They're very good making decisions, and that's what made this North Texas team be able to be so successful last year. He just lost it. Here comes Reuben Jones the other direction. Tries to Euro, but bodied a little bit. Tip, no. Second tip, yes. North Texas getting off to a fast start. Again, I just think a lot depends on Jones. Jones got in foul trouble yesterday and wasn't able to play much in the first half. Nolan ended up picking up a couple fouls early as well. They do say kicked ball here against Mean Green. Their first year head coach, Ross Hodge, dealt his first loss yesterday at the hands of Rick Patino, who has over 800 of them in his career. Rick has given a few people a few losses. I've got one from a Rick also, so. Did you ever get one on him? Nah, I only played him one time. Okay. He got me in the NCAA tournament. I appreciate the honesty, though. I mean, you could have, you know, you could have just said, hey, I got him a few times. Three and up. Freshman Mike Williams running the show. Baker working with him. They're trying to get Williams so that he can run this team. That's hard, Chucky, on a freshman point guard, especially playing against veteran guards. But for the LSU's development as a program, as a team this year, they need him to step up and be able to initiate and run the offense. He's known more as a scorer than a facilitator. Into that role, we talked about the absence of Jalen Cook, the Tulane transfer still waiting on the ruling of his transfer appeal. Started his career at LSU, then went to Tulane for two years, but he is a special player sitting on the Tigers bench. What makes him special is he can assist, he can also score. He does a good job of mixing the two, getting people involved and also scoring. Tough take inside, doesn't fall for Carlos Stewart. Junior local product out of Baton Rouge. North 
Walsh. That's his corner three off the mark. Baker pulls it in. Not working that shot clock quite as much as maybe we're used to seeing on that possession. Baker spinning. Almost lost it. And I'm going to say it's LSU ball. Early on, advantage North Texas. Game one of four here on day two at the Charleston Classic. He can score. He can handle that pressure, though, and that's what they were missing. And not only that, he's played in tough situations before, and he can help bring along some of the young guys. You got Williams right now trying to initiate, and it takes some time to get that flow under you. Having seen what we saw yesterday when Dayton did bring the press and forced a lot of turnovers from LSU, how do you get this team to a spot where they can handle some of that pressure? Well, you ha what you wind up doing is you take some of it off your point guard and that your two-guard handle. I think Wright's got to handle the ball a little bit more. Reed's got to handle the ball a little bit more. And I think you have to initiate your offense closer to the basket and not be so extended. Right, contested three late in the shot clock. Big shot there from Jordan Wright. That's something they need to see. They need him because he's experienced. He's been through this before. You need to count on your veterans early to kind of get you settled and get into a flow. Right yesterday, just one for seven from the field. Did not hit a three and had just four points. He told us before the game he'd be better today. Oh, and air balls the layup attempt. Pass. Fountain just kind of turned and airmailed it. There you see Wright. He's really a good offensive player. He gets squared up and knocked down the three. I think a lot of these, a lot of guys yesterday were playing around with the ball too much. Catch it, drive it, catch it, shoot it, or make the next pass. Don't be holding on to it too long. Wright averaged just under 11 points per game last year at Vanderbilt, where he spent four seasons. He came back in for Nolan over for John Bugs, the third who misses. Williams directing traffic. Keep an eye on Tyrell Ward. Top of your screen in the corner for LSU. Shot the ball really well yesterday. Three for three from long range. The other corner, Fountain for three. Nice feed from Baker and Fountain connects. Fountain really played well yesterday. If he can step up and give him some meaningful minutes, he helps him on the glass with his athleticism. LSU 6-0 run out of the timeout. Bugs corner three. Answers. If you're going to pressure like LSU is doing, you cannot allow the ball to get to the middle of the floor. Because once the ball gets to the middle of the floor, it gives offensively you've got the option to go either right or left or drive it in the middle of the floor. So if you're going to trap, you've got to take away the middle. Will Baker, they're dealing with some blood on his left elbow. That is what the delay is right now. Baker is off the corner of the court. Baker has really improved his game. And he was always known as a pick and pop guy. And now he's posting, he's passing the basketball, and coach is trying to make him more versatile in the offense. And if he can do that as you get to the SEC, it's going to make LSU much more difficult to play against. One thing the Tigers can't have, Matt McMahon said they need their old guys to be their old guys. Will Baker had just two points and four turnovers on one of four shooting against Nichols in that loss. That's something they can't have from him. Deep three straight away. First miss of the tournament from long range for Tyrell Ward. Fountain inside. Reverse layup is good. He's, Fountain has given them a big boost off the bench. Rebounding the basketball. Rebounding was something that LSU felt like that they weren't very good at as the season started, and they're getting better at it. Eric Fountain made 23 starts last season. Eight points, five and a half rebounds per game. 
Jones three, but a whistle first away from the ball. And looks like they got Tyro Ward. One of the things you learn in the offensive rebound, you go to the opposite side of the rim, and that's where most of the rebounds come off of. But don't stand and watch. Be aggressively going after the basketball, and that's one of the things Fountain is bringing. Tom played basketball at Southern Miss. He's from Holly Springs, Mississippi. Two years at Mississippi State before coming to LSU last year. This pass right there, Allen too strong, but a late whistle comes in and two shots coming for Robert Allen, who also gave North Texas good minutes yesterday. He really did. You know, he did a great job on the glass against St. John's strength. He, he didn't make some of his foul shots, which wound up being critical, so... Hopefully today he'll lock in and knock him down. It's the first one. Well, Sunday, two featured men's college basketball matchups at MSG on ESPN. Number five, UConn taking on the Indiana Hoosiers at 1 Eastern. And then it's number 19, Texas taking on Louisville. Exciting day of hoops. North Texas, prior to yesterday's loss, was on a seven-game win streak, which was the second longest in the country to the reigning national champions, UConn. One of the things, a, a guy like Allen, who's so active and so aggressive, you know you're going to get, he, you know he's going to get fouled. His, his ability to go to the line and knock down foul shots become critical as the season goes on. Ends up getting two. Texas back in front. Just over seven minutes played here in this first half. Trying to go into Fountain. And his pass is wide of the mark. Another turnover. Okay, but look at where the ball, was, the pass was thrown from. That's too long a lead. Williams has to get the ball in what we call the shoe, which is right around the top of the key, to make the lead pass either to the wing or to the post, a shorter pass. Right now, LSU is starting their offense out around half court, which is a little too far out. What do you find the biggest adjustment for a freshman coming into a big-time program like LSU? What's the toughest adjustment from high school AAU to this level? Getting the ball in an operating area offensively where you can be efficient and knowing it and recognizing where that is. He's a nice shot following his own shot. To follow up because you're being guarded by really good players. And it's not like high school or AAU where you can just push the ball and get it wherever you want. You're going to have to take the ball under pressure where the spots on the floor where the offense needs to operate. Here's how LSU was built. Nine transfers. Seven of them came in this year. Four high school signees. Two each of the last couple of years, and only two players remain from the Will Wade era. That time, it's Jason Edwards knocking it down for UNT. You talk about a microwave. When Edwards gets in the game, he is really looking to score the basketball. I talked to the coaches yesterday. They said that's not necessarily his role, but that's the role he likes to play. They get Robert Allen for a foul there. North Texas, though, playing with some good energy, and Jason Edwards coming through. Whenever you play the Memphis is twice, uh, you play the FAUs twice, and so you have a chance to get add to your resume. FAU right back at it this year after that Final Four last season. Ward going baseline to Baker now. See, LSU, the ball has not touched the paint yet. They've got them so extended that it makes it more difficult to get a shot. That's good defense by North Texas. Whenever you can have a possession and the ball never touches the paint, coaches will be satisfied with that. Back to back games for LSU because to me it seems like the guard situation for the Tigers, they're trying to iron things out, trying to figure out some roles. North Texas has really good guard play. Dayton has tremendous guard play, too. These are two tough tests for them. It is. And the biggest thing with the guards, is good defense right there by LSU. See if they can get a run out on this. Nice job by Wilkinson after he got the steal to run the floor. Offensively, 
coaches like to see the ball get into the paint area, collapse the defense. Even if you're a three-point shooting team, you want to keep the defense moving, get it inside, collapse it, and be able to get uh, some open looks as you reverse the basketball. A chance for Imwani Wilkinson to iron out a larger part in this rotation, the longest tenured Tiger, but Jason Edwards answers. He loves to shoot the jump shot now. I tell you, his eyes light up every time he gets a look. Whistle away from the ball. I think this is going to go on Allen, and it'll be his second foul. There you see great defensive effort right there. LSU's out and running, and whenever you run, you try to reward it with some easy baskets. Coaches like easy baskets, Chucky. No coach will turn down an easy basket. And that's how they really push the defense. I didn't get to ask you yesterday. You were talking about all the different ways you can win a game. What's your favorite way to win a game as a coach? The easy way? <laughs> <laughs> the easy way. You know, you like to do it with your defense. You like to trigger that because that you can travel with that. Reed inside and good patience underneath on Sissoko to lay it in. It's important for Reed to come back and have another good game today. The consistency of play is what you look for in tournaments like this. He's really talented with his size and ball skills. That goes flying into the stands. Again, just like at the top, you see Reed can put the ball on the floor and create fortunate to be in leagues where um, we really had quality officials. The last one I was in with the SEC, and without question, they have really good officials. You may not agree with them, but normally they're right. Edwards air balls the three. It stays at this end again. And what you look for out of officials is consistency in controlling the game. So the players recognize what a foul is. You can coach to what a foul may be called that day. Edwards right back to it. This is short again. <laughs> he doesn't blink when he gets it now. Corner three. See again, LSU came down. Ball never touched the paint. It makes it hard offensively to have consistency when the ball never gets inside. Teams firing away from long range right now and not having any luck. Reed putting the ball on the floor. Whistle before the shot attempt against Aaron Scott. And that's the thing Reed brings. He can put the ball on the floor, so therefore he gets the ball in the paint. He doesn't just catch it and try to operate from wherever he catches it from. Women's hoop season underway tonight. A featured matchup on ESPN Plus. The LSU Tigers on the women's side. Number seven in the country taking on Southeastern Louisiana. Eastern. Eastern Mofi yet again. Very talented team. They do have an early loss this season to Colorado. Quarter three, early in the shot clock, rolls off, and there was a push. Spotted by the near side official, goes against Mulai Sissoko. Sissoko, though, is doing what he's supposed to do. He's in there to kind of be a physical presence because basically this North Texas team operates with four guys on the perimeter because Scott operates a lot on the perimeter. So they need a presence. So they, Coach doesn't mind Sissoko picking up a foul for being physical inside. LSU swaps a couple big men out. Baker and Reed go to the bench. Hunter Dean and Fountain come in. Here is Fountain. Now Williams. Looks like Stewart might have stepped on the line and turnover against LSU. Number five against the Tigers. Yesterday they had 15. 
well, I, I think a lot of times it comes from their enthusiasm and they're trying to make plays that aren't there on the first or second pass. So they've got to reverse the ball and be a little bit more patient, wait on the screens, and utilize the screens better. Williams almost strips Scott now a skip pass. Eight to shoot. Scott has it, and that's poked away again by Williams. Here comes Jordan Wright, lays it up and cannot get it to go. Say that foul was on the ground. North Texas holds a narrow lead, 19-16 over LSU. It's that you want to use, you do some walkthroughs, but mentally you get them ready for what will work and what will win today. And then you go back and you got time to clean up some things that you didn't do well in the past game. I think one of the things is finding a way to get Scott more involved with what's going on. Right now we had a flagrant, a one, and that's why LSU is shooting the ball twice and they'll get it on the side. Two free throws after that foul on John Bugs just kind of wrapping up Jordan Wright. We'll take another look at that as LSU pulls it to one. Yeah, no play on the ball. He just kind of wrapped him up. Normally Wright would have finished that, but he just kind of wrapped him up with no play on the ball. So the two free throws for LSU, and then they get the basketball now underneath with a chance to take the lead. Stewart for the lead. Too strong, ran down by Williams, and a foul against C.J. Nolan. One of the things coming into the tournament that LSU was concerned with was their ability to offensive rebound. I think they've done a good job so far rebounding the basketball on the offensive end. Floater in the lane, off the glass. Nice move there by Jordan Wright. He's got the ability to make some tough shots, and that's what you need. When your offense sometimes doesn't produce a shot for you, you need somebody that can go make a tough shot. 6-0 run for LSU, and they've got the ball again. Williams with some nice energy here. Stewart. Dean working underneath. Lost it. Williams picks it up. Fires the three. No good. Rebound Scott. They lost Jones inside of the right hand and gets the roll. Somebody has to stop the ball. That's the first thing you learn defensively. Not let the ball penetrate that deep. away from behind there by Reuben Jones. Stays LSU ball. You know, we talk about LSU's guard situation, and there you see the drive there for the layup with Jones. And that's something that he does really well. I, I just think he's the catalyst for this North Texas team. He's their leader. Right stepping up right now for LSU. He's got 10 points to lead all scorers. He told us before the game, Chucky, that he was going to play today, and he stepped up so far. They need it. They need a guard who can step up and score in multiple ways. Wright's done that so far today. Up top for Bugs. Open three. And the answer from North Texas. Jones just seems to know where everybody on the floor is and how to get them the basketball. And then when it's his time to call his own number, he has the ability to do that. One of the things that LSU, I think, has to get better with is they've got to find a guy that can beat his guy off the dribble. None of the guys so far has consistently been able to beat their man off the dribble and create a rotation, create a mismatch. And so, therefore, they're stuck on the perimeter way too much. 
All goes well this year for North Texas. Reuben Jones, who just knocked down the triple, will become the all-time winningest player in that program's history. Well, he's definitely the guy that is the cabinet for this team. Quick 6-0 run for North Texas over the last 46 seconds, and Jones has a... Also creates driving lanes for you, and a lot of those have come off the assist of Jones. See the numbers right there, 7 of 16 from long range today. They came into the tournament shooting 45% from three in their first two games, but yesterday just 6 of 19 is their worst shooting performance of the season as Baker turns and hits the two. Coach took a timeout. Finally, they get the ball inside. LSU has to go inside. They're physically, they're they're bigger, they're stronger. I just think they have to get the ball into the paint area. This is a tough matchup, big-wise, because Jalen Reed ends up on Aaron Scott. Reed is really mobile. He also has about 30 pounds on Scott. Ward no! Oh, my goodness, that's not going to count. But Imwani Wilkinson. Oh, well, that's the athleticism that LSU has. But they've got to get out in the open floor to show it. And I'm telling you, the great drive right there. Look at Wilkinson get above the basket. You have to be able to highlight your athleticism. And the way you do that is defensively being able to make stops, get out, run, and transition, and get guys in the open and floor. That was impressive on the putback as Ward hits the first free throw. Nolan re-enters for Sissoko. And North Texas, they are going really, really small, small here. Really small. Do you like this? Well, Coach Hodge has a better feel for his team than I do. And I think at this point in time, again, you're playing back-to-back -back days. You need to give guys some rest. And he'll go four round one or five out and try to take guys off the dribble. Three by Scott, no, tipped out. They do get an offensive rebound. Jones for three, no. Part of it is Sissoko has three fouls and Allen has two. So a little bit out of necessity as Wilkinson hits the triple. W Wilkinson has really stepped up. This is probably where you'd feel you'd have a little bit of an advantage to spread the floor, but on the other side, big size advantage for LSU. Yeah, but by spreading the floor, you try to get them in closeouts, and you always, kids are taught to attack the closeout. Scott off balance, Baker rebounds. Foul trouble. Playing its part in this first half, especially for North Texas. See, they have LSU too far extended. Reed inside and a block called on Nolan. He paid for it. And Wani Wilkinson, the putback didn't count, but he can shoot it too. What you want in transition, you want a good look. The Wilkinson gets. I think I looked at all the games in college basketball today. That is one of the best ones. There are some good ones. That's one of the best. And this arena will be sold out. Yeah, it will be packed. And the intensity level will be extremely high. Those two fan bases traveled like you would not believe for a November, mid-November tournament. Here's the winner's bracket right now. St. John's Dayton, two Eastern over on ESPN2. And then number six, Houston, who... That's going to be a war. That is. That's going to be a war. Nobody plays defense like Houston. I mean... They flat out get after you. See how they handle the Utah size, but a very intriguing matchup for Jay Alter and Debbie Antonelli to unpack later this evening. Scott, corner three. They can't quite get him going. Nice offensive rebound. Bugs fires away. He just kills it on the back higher and it falls home. This North Texas team, even though they're undersized, do a really good job of rebounding the basketball. Allen on the floor right now with two fouls for North Texas. Sissoko already has three, so both bigs in trouble. Ward three, short. 
I thought they had Baker on a post up and they couldn't make the pass that time. Two and a half to play in the first half. Bugs just hit the three on the last possession. Off the glass this time in the paint. He and Jones really work well together. That time Jones couldn't penetrate, so he looked for Bugs coming off a curl. I still think LSU is too too extended. They've got to get some penetration, either dribble, pass. They got to get the ball in the paint. They're basically five out right now. Baker fades away. Made something happen. Yeah. Yeah, Baker's just, he's too big and too strong. I don't see North Texas having really an answer for him in the post area. Got eight points on four of six shooting. So he's been efficient, just hadn't taken a lot of shots, really. You know, we talk about Jones and Buzz in this North Texas team, how well they work together. You know, there he is stepping up, knocking down a three. And then what he does a good job is playing off of Jones. And that time he's driving off a of curl action. But they really do a good job of playing together. Jones keeps the ball in his hands most of the time. But when he gives it to you, you normally have an open shot. Five to shoot. Edwards. Mid-range fades and hits it. Tough shot for Jason Edwards. You know, we talk about LSU guard play offensively, but defensively. Late in this first half, back and forth. Well, I, I, the competitive spirit of the teams that have played in this side uh, of the bracket that we've seen has just been tremendous in the intensity level for this early in the year. 13 lead changes. And it's basically just now lunchtime here in Charleston. <laughs> Trey Hannibal trying to go to Baker. He lost it. Now North Texas going four on four here. Now five on four as Scott arrives and he wants it going down the lane. Gets contact stripped away. Hannibal. He's too strong. At the He's defense. Too strong. He's just too strong. But well, he puts that body on you. Fourteenth lead change now. LSU up one. Just a couple seconds difference in the shot and game clock. Look for Jones to try to get a ball screen, penetrate, and try to find a shooter in the corner. Foul on Hannibal. That was strategically done. Now they'll take the ball out on the side to try to break the rhythm of the set play. Had a few to give before the bonus. 6.9 left for North Texas. Five seconds. Jones. Mid range. Rims off, one second, Reed fires away, not going to go. And LSU leads by one at the break over North Texas. What stands out to you most in the first half? I think North Texas' ability to transition and get the... Eight of 20 from three for North Texas in that first half. This team can shoot it. You see, LSU, though, a one-point lead at halftime. Three more games coming later today. You know, one of the things I think North Texas has to do is get Scott going. He only has four. He's one out of four right now. And he's a very good offensive player. Aaron Scott had 26 in their opener, 18 in game two. 13, though, yesterday. Here is Scott, mid-range. Nice save right there by Carlos Stewart. LSU with the freshman. Almost a turnover, but it stays here. That's a tough pass. He, he, he's in the air. He's trying to throw the ball in the corner. That's just 
That's a freshman pass right there. Officials coming together here. North Texas thought it was their ball. And Robert Allen was actually on the other end of the floor. He thought it was theirs so much. Unless you like to run the flex action off the inbound. There you see him. That's what they want to get the ball in the bacon. It didn't go, but that's where he needs to touch the basketball. They're not physically strong enough, North Texas, to keep him out of that paint area. Baker, a seven footer, about 245. North Texas, tallest guy on the roster, six foot nine. Fade away for Scott. He does get this one. Second attempt of this second half. But that's a that's a good basket, but he, he's working too hard. If I'm LSU and Scott has to work that hard to get every basket, I'm comfortable with that. And Reed kind of bunched up a little bit there. Corner three, open look, short. Rebound Jones. Nolan, nice bounce pass there. Baker fouls Allen, but it was on the floor. Watch Scott. See, he's working dribble, 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 spin, fade away. That's a lot of work. You've got to get him something where he can get a quick shot or a quick drive, and he doesn't have to look to make three, four dribbles to get a good look. Oh, he had an open three for a second. Jones contested. Allen tips it up. Scott pulls it in, falls down. The whistle going against Williams, which is important because that's number three on Mike Williams. And the two players both shake hands. They're just competing. I love the energy Scott has, and a lot of people won't get a chance to see him play a lot this year, maybe. But this young man is very talented. He works extremely hard. But everybody's putting their defense to try to figure out ways to stop him. So you have to kind of make it easy for him to get a few looks, especially to get his confidence going. He's been the guy to step up really big early in this season. And a historic year last year, but lost 70% of their scoring. And Ross Hodge said he's not surprised that Aaron Scott has been the guy. He saw the commitment saw it in his approach, the way he's taking care of his body, he's in the training room, he's in the gym constantly. They could use him today if they want to pick up a big win early in the season over LSU. Turnover. There's too much of that for LSU. Without question, they're going east-west and not north-south. And again, when we talk about the LSU's guard play, and that's what we heard a lot about it coming in. We've talked a lot about it here. They need to be able to penetrate, get the ball in the paint, and that will make their offense a little bit smoother. What do you think that is? We've seen those passes that's unforced miscommunication between teammates. How, how do you iron this out? Well, one of the things you can do is start running. You, you, you run set stuff into your motion. They're coming down and they're basically playing four out, five out. Scott that time on a good drive. But I think that you have to wind up maybe running some set stuff so guys know where people are going and it's not a read. Coaches like to give their players some freedom and flexibility, but sometimes when you're not getting the shot that you want or the ball where you want it, then you have to give it some structure and let the structure go into some motion. Fountain and Baker, the two bigs right now for LSU. Wright was pretty good in the first half. Misses that attempt from three. He actually leads them with 10 points. That's just his second miss of the game. Now Jones working. Slow start offensively for both teams. Over three minutes in, just two points total in this second half, belonging to North Texas. Allen, can he get the roll? He can. He's played well. Allen has played well yesterday and today. He's playing against bigger opponents, but he's held his own in that post area. North 
Texas yesterday, even when St. John's pushed the lead out a little bit, just never wavered. We saw that same mentality from Dayton in both of so LSU kind of gets a similar look with North Texas, just a dogfight against this team. Up to Scott, reverse layup does not go. That young man's having a tough night. He's had the last few shots have been pretty good looks, especially for him, and they just haven't gone. Here's Baker. Operating in the short corner. Block shot this time by Allen. Baker goes right back to work. Loses it. Third chance, no. Fourth chance, not a chance. That's going in either. And here comes Jones. Jones soaring at the rim. What a finish. Tremendous finish that time by Jones. But that's what North Texas has done. They've been able to challenge people at the rim. And because they've been able Starting to fill up with Red and then Houston, Utah. After that, also an intriguing matchup. Utah, you talked about the physicality on defense, or excuse me, Houston, and then Utah with their size and in a nice win over Wake Forest last night. Now the pressure from North Texas, something LSU really struggled with last night. 15 turnovers. And part of it is not knowing how you want to attack pressure. Do you want to attack it and score? Do you want to just break it and bring it out and reset and run your offense? I think last night they got caught in the never, never land. Nice move there. Reverse pivot by Will Baker. Okay. Coach has made up his mind. We're going inside. All right. And he's declared that we're getting the ball to Baker. We're getting the ball in the post. That gives clarity to what you want to do. And now you have a chance of really being successful. Nolan gives it away. Here comes Hannibal. Look out. Hand off to Fountain. But he was fouled. You got to bring Mr. Baker to the party if your Ellis played with confidence. Yesterday they played with it. Today they, they've also played with poise. And they found ways to stay in games. Like Scott has not had a great tournament so far, but yet other people have really stepped up and played well. Scott called for a foul there inside on Fountain. Two shots coming up for LSU. But LSU now, you can see kind of a change in their demeanor. They're really looking to get the ball inside, get the ball to the block, try to get to the foul line. LSU, a team who had great success in recent years under Will Wade before his departure. North Texas is a team that understands winning. And even though Grant McCaslin has departed, Ross Hodge being the guy that took over, didn't take long to name him the new head coach. He knows what this program's about. They've been one of the best in the country the last few years. Yeah, and, and, and Coach Hodge, I mean, they were a team. So, Coach Hodge, this is not a, a change in voice for the players because Coach Hodge did a lot of stuff with them last year. First Division One head coaching job, but was a very successful junior college head coach. 146 and 24 record in his career at that level. Three seconds, Scott inside, going back out. Fountain trying to save it, doesn't matter. Shot clock violation. Scott's got, I think this is going to sound funny coming from a coach. Scott's got to be more greedy greedier than what he is. He's got to really look and hunt his shots because it's important for him to be able to produce some points for this North Texas team. He's looking to pass. He's being very passive offensively. And LSU is going into the last three times they're getting the ball in the paint area. They're not messing around on the perimeter with a lot of dribble handoffs and everything. They're coming down and throwing the ball into the paint. Jones floats it up. No, Baker rebounds. Chance for LSU to regain the lead. 15 lead changes, but they give it away. Their eighth turnover. They clean things up a little bit, but that's another sloppy turnover. Yeah, that was Trey Hannibal's fault. As a guard, you're supposed to come to the big guy and not run away from him to make that pass easier for the outlet.
Jason Edwards, mid-range fadeaway, rolls off. Sissoko can't pull it in, but it does stay here. It went off Tyrell Ward. Ward's been quiet today after shooting the ball really well yesterday for the Tigers. Two points, and both of them have come to the free throw line. But again, North Texas does a good job on the offensive glass, as small as they are. Plus three in the offensive rebounding category. They've got eight total, five-second violation. You can't have that in a tight basketball game. You can't have a violation on the underneath, out of bounds. After your initial cuts, you have a safety valve that if it doesn't go where you initially want it, somebody pop. Another opportunity for LSU to take the lead. Wilkinson, corner, Hannibal, three is good! His first triple of the season. He's capable of shooting the ball. He just gets so preoccupied with driving the basketball and attacking. But you can see LSU, this was caused because of the penetration. You'll see whenever the ball gets near the paint, the defense collapses and it opens up your shooters. LSU over the last two minutes and 10 seconds on an 8-0 run, but a technical foul issued on Trey Hannibal here. Can't let your enthusiasm control you. You make three and then you give back two. Game tied at 42. I couldn't see exactly I'm what sure, happened yeah. there. But this is a good officiating crew. He must have said something. Well, it didn't seem like there was a lot of protest yeah. on the LSU side. Soko, the short corner. Getting inside, right hand hook, rims off. Rebound goes to Dean. Hannibal pushing, now Ward going baseline. Strong move, too strong on the shot. Up top, no, Sissoko had the rebound, but a foul whistle first. And let's go back and look at that technical on Trey Hannibal. He knocks down the shot. He's talking to somebody there. Not sure if that was at I, Ruben. Yeah, I think that think was at Ruben Jones. Jones. He, yeah, because he pointed at Jones. They've been kind of going back and forth. Both of them are very competitive. The official happened to catch a little bit of the conversation, didn't like what he heard. Woods finds himself back at the line. This is he, He's going to have some big nights, Jason Edwards, oh. because he's going to shoot it no matter what, but he's going to have some nights where he really goes off. Yeah. And he plays with such confidence. I mean, you know, he likes scoring. There's some people that can score. Some people that can score and like the score, and he likes the score. Let's see if LSU can continue to try to get the ball inside. Ward inside. Layup is good. Nice take by Tyrell Ward. It looks like... LSU has found the gear in this game, especially in this half, where they're really looking to attack and not playing east-west, but more north-south. Sissoko working on Baker, double team. Lost it for a second, still time. Edwards up top, stone extra pass. Bugs fades, hits it, tough shot over Ward. Can he shoot the basketball? 
Teams in the American are going to have to be aware of this perimeter attack by North Texas. Fountain with the answer. Well, he's played well, Chucky. He has come in. He's rebounded the ball well. He's taken advantage of his offensive opportunities. If he can give them a good lift like this, that will mean a lot to the LSU program. One-point game. Nolan with it. Nolan's been quiet. I, I thought he would really have a big game today. And a both days this weekend. Stone in the corner. Rims off. Freshman Williams back to work. Down the left lane line. Does not get the roll. And a blocking foul called against North Texas. 17 lead changes. Is that enough for you? <laughs> Bugs right there. Gets it. I'll be in here watching them practice okay. and talking. Okay. Hannibal's technical. He was mouthing at one of the other players, and the official wasn't appreciative of what he was saying or how he was saying it. Sometimes those competitive juices can kind of work against you. I like the pace of this game, though both for LSU and for North Texas because I think they're both trying to play to their strength. LSU getting the ball inside and trying to use their physicality. North Texas by running, spreading the floor, using their ability to knock down the threes. Especially with LSU right now, they need an identity. Can it be that? Can they play through the post, play through Baker, and play through Reed, who seen a ton of in the second half. Jones into the paint. Floater. Too strong. Rebound Wilkinson. We haven't seen much of Wright here in the second half. He had a pretty good first half. LSU five of their last six field goals and a turnover just through the hands of Wright. They were trying to get him set up on that slot drive. Under 10 to play in the second half. Almost taken by Wright, but it leaves Scott open from the elbow and he can't hit it. Scott just two for 10 and just four points on the day. Hannibal in trouble. That's a turnover. Here comes Edwards. Edwards going to the rack and a lot of contact there by Jordan Wright. Watch Edwards on this move. He goes into the defense. He's the one that creates the contact. Watch him. He's not trying to avoid it. He's going right into it to draw the foul. That's the guy that likes the score. Two shots for Edwards, who's a good free throw shooter. Sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Played at Parkview High School, then on to Dodge City Community College before coming to North Texas and trying to fill some of the void left behind by a guy like Tyler Perry, who was the Conference USA Player of the Year last year. Perry now at Kansas State. It's off to a great start there, too. It's North Texas back ahead. LSU has gone small too. Outside of Baker, they're basically playing with four perimeter players. Or two Baker. Eight to shoot. Wright finds himself alone. Rebound North Texas. Jones from three. Got it! He is so crafty with the basketball. Timeout LSU. Jones does a really good job of getting people involved. He's been the main guy that's really helped Scott because they play so well. Brazil, so I don't think she's going to be at that one. LSU 
LSU finds themselves down four. No field goals in the last two and a half minutes. Scott has it. Going at Fountain. And Fountain blocks it. Almost kept in by Wilkinson. Scott's got to use... He's got to use his body to protect the ball a little bit more. Watch him. He's raw jumping, not high jumping. You have to high jump over the defender so he can get the ball high on the glass and at least give it a chance to get in. North Texas inbound. Bugs, he's been quiet in the second half. Mid-range jumper rolls off. We're getting towards that point in the game now where LSU really needs to be efficient. This is the part of the game where sometimes it gets away from them. Stewart working. Over three defenders, no. Fountain has been really active, and he got it! Count the bucket for Derek Fountain. He, Derek Fountain is doing what you want your post guys to do. Go to the front of the rim. You go to the front of the rim. If your guy comes off to help, they can kick it to you. He puts you in a rebounding position right or left of the, of the way the ball comes off the rim. But he is coming to attack. 12 points, 5 rebounds. He hasn't missed a shot from the field today. He's just 1 of 2 from the free throw line. But 5 for 5. Today he's playing well, and, and Reed's being a, 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 a no-show. If they can get he and Reed playing well together, along with Baker, now all of a sudden you're really putting something special together. I haven't seen a lot of Reed in the second half. Just 16 minutes tonight so far. Doesn't sound like a tiny amount, but in the bugs. Nice little back and forth. Doesn't get the roll. Here comes Ward quickly. Ward going inside. Lays it up. No good. Oh, my goodness. Is that Fountain? It was hard to tell. There's so many hands in there. I, th I thought it was Ward again. Maybe it was. That is not sure how he got that in. Ward does a great job of attacking, especially in transition. It was Ward who got that bucket. Tied at 52. Allen with the left hand. Fountain another rebound. I'm not sure Allen's the guy you want to go to on an isolation. To Baker, and the ball's starting to move for LSU right now. Baker, offensive foul. Matt mm -hmm. McMahon disagrees, but LSU right back to it, tied up. Plan of attack in the second half versus the first. Oh, very much so. I think they made up their mind. Coach McMahon made up his mind. We're going inside, and they've done a good job of that. We have gone back and forth 19 times in this game. Where will North Te Texas look with Aaron Scott having his struggles offensively? Edwards from three, deep one over Fountain. You know he wants to rip it. And the key thing is the minute he caught it, he knew what he was going to do with the basketball. Catch it, shoot it, catch it, drive it, catch it, pass it, but don't hold it. Edwards has 17. Baker with the response to pull it to one. LSU, they finally made that conscious decision. We're just going to throw the ball inside to the big fella. Here's Edwards. His North Texas high is 19. Came in 24 minutes of action against Northern Iowa, but that's a turnover. Watch on this play, Chucky. When they come off the weak side, they give it to him, and he just catches it and shoots it. That's what you want your players to do, not mess around with the basketball, make a decision quickly.
to Baker again. Ducks his head, cannot get the roll. Fountain fighting for it, but North Texas has it. See, I don't think he should have ducked his head. He should have just exploded and made the referee make a call. Inside, Baker takes it away. Ahead to Williams, has help arriving. The Euro step hits it. Defensively right now, it's important time for LSU to lock in. Timeout on the floor. Matt McMahon's team up one against a very good North Texas side. Defensively, this LSU team is getting better there, Texas. They did a great job taking over originally as the interim for Chris Beard, who is now at Ole Miss. Terry did a great job last year. They certainly have talent. North Texas down one, under five to play here in Charleston. Edwards, another, too strong this time. Offensive rebound, Allen. Allen has been amazing with his ability to offensive rebound in, the, in these two games. He's gone against some really good low post players. He's outsized and, out, and physically undermanned a little bit, but he has really moved his feet and has really been aggressive in giving North Texas second and third shots. Fourth foul against Mike Williams. the first of the one and one unless you still a few fouls away from shooting free throws gets them both and ties his north texas career high in his young career at north texas with 19. on the baseline spinning nice move by Derek Fountain who's had a big day he's had a huge day I mean not only has he rebounded the ball defended well now he's stepping up and scoring in the low block still perfect from the field 14 points six of six he's even hit a three travel on Scott and he's wound up guarding Scott and doing a great job defending him If, if they can get Fountain to step up early, but you'll never say no to lifting a trophy. Never. You know, LSU is going with the freshman Williams. And Coach is really, he came in as a scorer. Coach is trying to develop him into a facilitator and someone that can run this offense. Whistle away from the ball. I think this is going to go against Allen. And that'll be his fourth, if so. He's trying not to let Baker establish too deep a position. Let's see by one. They go to Baker on the block. Doubling for a moment. Right now, six to shoot. Steps back, leans in, blocks. It's a foul called against Jones. Again, LSU trying to get the ball in the paint area. They're making up their minds. That's where they want to go. They got the ball to Baker in the low block to collapse the defense. Right. Chucky, he's a veteran. He played at Vanderbilt. He's been in these situations before. Coaches like to go through a, a proven product, someone that's been there and has experience with it. So it's no surprise that they're going with him right now. The first free throw to roll in. A Louisiana native from a suburb of New Orleans attended the Dunham School, which was the same as Carlos Stewart. Some of these Louisiana guys back in the state. Tigers by three. Edwards lays it up, rolls off, fountain rebounds. 
LSU needs to continue to attack, continue to try to get the ball into the post area. Edwards almost had it back. That was a freshman mistake. When I talk about long leads, you see where he was trying to pass the ball from the circle all the way to the wing. That's just too far for quick defensive players. They're able to shoot the gap, and that's how you come up with a lot of steals. You've got to shorten your leads in late game situations. Let's see four of their last five from the field. Baker, short, kicked, and it'll be off of right, it looks like. Matt McMahon's thinking, another one of these? <laughs> well, both teams are. I mean, these are the growing pains that both of these two teams right this part of the season are going through. And I will tell you, the loser of this one will really hurt a lot more than yesterday. Bugs. Too strong, tipped around. Stripped away, nice hands there by Jordan Wright. Fountain, turnover. That's the thing we talked about this time of the game. You really don't want turnovers. You've got to get at least a shot up on the glass, try to get a chance to offensive rebound, and try to get a chance to get fouled. You don't want empty trips. And Ruben Jones be the guy for North Texas. That rims off, and the scoring drought continues, approaching about 220 now. And under two minutes to play in the game. LSU is riding the freshman wins right now. They're letting him run the show. Into Baker, 10 to shoot. Nice spin on the baseline. Does not get the roll, but two free throws coming up for Will Baker. The thing that I like, Coach McMahon has made a conscious decision in the second half. We're going inside. He's let his team know that, live or die, that's what we're doing. And when you do that and bring that type of clarity, it really makes things, I think, a lot more, a lot simpler. And because everybody understands it. Robert Allen's day is done for Ross Hodge. He'll take a seat and have to watch the rest of this and now Trying to make sure they get the right guy in. Mulai Sissoko will come into the game. Allen has done a yeoman's work in both of these two games. I mean, Chucky, he's been out, man. Physically, he's played against guys bigger, stronger than he has. And he has fought like the Dickens to give North Texas a fighting chance on the glass. Offensively, he's made some shots. He's really played hard. Sissoko started the game, but he's played only 11 minutes today as Baker hits the first free throw. That's a big one to make it a two-possession game. Look for North Texas to try to run something maybe to get a three. Not that they need one, but their three-point shooting has been pretty good. Here we go. Big possession for North Texas. Down five, a minute 30 to play. Jones off a screen from Scott. Scott open for three. No good offensive rebound. Edwards open. That is off the mark. And LSU cannot pull it in. It'll be North Texas ball with 20 on the shot clock. But that's okay. They had two looks. And that was their best opportunity. They really don't have a dominant low post player, so trying to get the ball in the paint really is not a smart option. Trying to come up with a three. They had a couple of good looks. They just didn't fall. North Texas down just five. Scoring drought that has spanned 316. They are just one of their last 11. Jones away from the screen. Blocking foul called. LSU thought they had it. One and one coming up for Reuben Jones. Jones is so clever with the basketball. Jones does a great job of taking what you give him right there. 
Wright wasn't in, wasn't in a real good guarding position. Jones does a good job of getting his body into yours. First free throw of the day for Jones is good. Now here comes pressure. LSU got a taste of it yesterday. Here comes the pressure. Again, this is important for Williams to be able to handle it. Both free throws. A one possession game now. 106 left. LSU turned it over 15 times yesterday. The Dayton full court press really bothered them. This time Ward breaks it. But one of the things the pressure does also is make you take a rush shot or a tough shot. So they're going to keep the pressure on them. Fountain lost it right to Baker. Three to shoot. Baker rises and hits. That was a big time shot right there. North Texas needs to score. Wild shot from Jones. Jump ball belongs to North, North Texas. Texas. The fact that they've gone to their inside presence, although he doesn't, he's not a dominant low post player, but he's able to get the ball there. He has not been effective today getting the ball in the low post area. Just four points, two of 12 from the field. Edwards open for three, and he airballed it. And it's another good look for North Texas. 23 seconds. Mean Green's got a foul got here. Foul. Got a foul. Another good look. Uh, yeah. Talk again. I, I, I said it. I, guys have to be able to talk on the out of bounds play. You know it's going to be some sort of action where there's going to be screening or crossing and all. And how you handle that and how you play that has to be decided in the huddle. We used to just switch everything. That way I knew it was going to be guarded. Big free throw there from the freshman Williams. This has been a growing up game for him because coaches let him play through his mistakes. Yesterday, he kind of yanked him in and out with Trey Hannibal, but he's let Williams kind of ride this out to grow up a little bit, and that'll be helpful. Just two turnovers for Williams today. Hasn't scored a lot, but those are two big-time free throws to make this a three-possession game. Jones trapped over to Scott. Edwards open again for three. This time he does get it with a tick under 11 seconds to play. He'd like to have that other one back and nail, and nail that one on that. Looked like they just throw the ball inside the ward. I don't know why they're not playing him. In the right, fouled immediately. You can always tell the better foul shooters who, once they catch it, that they're not going to give it up. They know they're going to get fouled, so they want to hold on to the ball. Gordon Wright, the grad transfer from Vanderbilt, now to the line. A snap a two-game losing streak for LSU in painful fashion in both of them. One to Nichols and one to Dayton. Misses. Nine seconds. North Texas got to go. Jones coming down. And Baker swats it away. Right on cue, Will Baker comes up big. And today's player of the game brought to you by Shriners Children's is Will Baker.